So you do go to Mississippi Valley State, Division One AA, Itabina, Mississippi. Well, they were coached by this incredible character, Archie Gunslinger Cooley. And he had a philosophy of football, which was kind of different. What was his, what was his idea for, for offense? His idea was to run and shoot, and he wanted to go for the juggler. So you had the gunslinger, then you had Willie the Cell like Todd. <laughs> Then you had Jerry the World Rice. <laughs> That's right. Imagine that. Imagine. So it's like we threw the ball the majority, you know, the majority of the time. Willie Totten, stand up, please. That's Willie Totten. <laughs> Willie Satellite Totten. Now, what was, what was your reaction the first time you met Jerry Rice? Well, I tell you, when we came in as freshmen, uh, I remember seeing this kind of tall, skinny kid uh, uh, standing in front of the dormitory. Who gave each other these nicknames? Well, I think it was one of the, uh, the commentators. Uh, he made this statement in terms of he can catch anything in the world. And I think it's kind of started out that way. And same thing with my nickname. And, and they called me the satellite. And when we used to throw the football, they say the ball used to just sit up in the air like a satellite <laughs> and then just beam down on the receivers and boom, hit the world. Very creative. It's true. Very creative. <laughs> <laughs> it was it was amazing by the way willie's now the head coach at mississippi valley state you remember some of the scores you guys rang up remember the highest amount of the points you got in a single game i think one score we had 80 to zero that's true and no huddle no huddle no huddle <laughs> and, and you know the thing about that archie cooley did not call the dogs off he was a gunslinger. He still wanted more. Oh, yeah. He, he just, yeah. But, but we the threw the ball. We, we threw the ball 90% uh, of the time. It okay. was in the air. And it was called, I remember call, they called it the Satellite Express. Let's get a, let's get a look at it. It resumes. It'll be third and six. The Mississippi Valley from the 41 of Texas Southern. Totten to throw. Fly pattern. Jerry Rice. Touchdown. 41 yards. Got behind Leon Thomason. And Jerry Rice has his second touchdown pass of the night. And he made it. Huh. Now, when you got really famous, Mississippi Valley State wanted to rename the stadium after you. What would you say when you said, we want to name it Jerry Rice Stadium? Well, I wanted Willie Totten on there also. Why? Because he played a very significant role. I didn't do it by myself, you know, with the success that we had at Mississippi Valley State University. You're in college, you're about to graduate. When do you know in your heart? You don't that know. That you could be an NFL star. It's scary. It's scary because you don't know because, you know, you hear everybody talk about, well, he's going to get selected. He's going to go. Then you're sitting there. You know, I didn't want to throw the big party. You, you have so many players on, they throw the big party before the draft, and they're sitting there like the second round, then the third <laughs> round, the fourth round. And I was like, I'm not going to do that. All so. right, well, we'll get to that. We'll get to that. <laughs> when we come back on homecoming, Jerry gets drafted by not one, but two leagues. And I think the Niner Nation knows uh, where you end up signing. We'll be back. All right, you're looking at one of the great trophy cases in all of sports, San Francisco 49er trophy case with Jerry Rice, who made three of them happen. So, Jerry, which, which three are yours? Okay, we're going to go right here. This is Super Bowl 23 against the Cincinnati Bengals at Joe Robbie Stadium, 20-16. to 16, And we won that one on the final drive. Behind, behind with three minutes to play. Yeah, and next we're going to go to uh, Super Bowl 24 against the Denver Broncos in New Orleans where we beat them 55-10, where we got all up in them. So this last one <laughs> is Super Bowl 29 against the uh, San Diego Chargers where that week we did not make a mistake. We knew exactly what we wanted to do. We knew how we wanted to attack that team. And we were able to score early in uh, the score, 49-26. You but, know, but just you, hanging you out. three touchdowns in the game. You, you seem to have forgotten that. Yeah, oh, that's right. I had three <laughs> touchdowns with a, with a separated shoulder. <laughs> not bad. Not bad at all. You know, this is why we play uh, professional football. You know, you want to win Super Bowls. Yes, you're going to, you know, you're going to, have money where you're going to be able to support your family and do all that, but, you know, you play for the ring. The night before a game in Houston, and we had the best team in football at the time, 
And as usual, I'd go to my, get my meetings over with by about 10.30, go to the room, turn on the television, watch a movie or, in this case, the highlights of college football that week. So it was a Saturday night, and they showed two or three highlights, and then they said, here is the, the phenomenon from Mississippi Valley State, Jerry Rice. And I'd heard the name, and people had talked about him. So they had a highlight of him catching four or five touchdown passes. And he was unbelievable. I said, this, said it to myself, this is the greatest young player I have seen to play that position. Welcome back to Homecoming. I'm Rick Riley. We're in Santa Clara, California at the Great America Theater with a great American, Jerry Rice. Now, before the draft, you were actually drafted number one overall by the USFL and the Birmingham Stallions. Now, that's pretty close to home. Did you, were you tempted by that? Yeah, I was tempted by it, but I think I was drafted by them. Then they folded. Then that league just, you know, they couldn't afford me. <laughs> so I decided to, uh, you know, NFL. Right. Now, arguably, one of the biggest days of your life, draft day, NFL, and yet your parents weren't anywhere around that day. Where were they? Well, they were home, but I was with my brother Tom. Uh, you know, because, like I said, I was nervous, and I didn't know how the draft would go. So we sat there, we watched, and, uh, and it was so funny because Al Toon went, Eddie Brown went, Receivers, then, both receivers? Yeah, then I think Dallas had the next pick. And I said, well, you know, there's the possibility I might become a cowboy. All right? <laughs> hey, look, look, let me tell you guys something, okay? When you sit in there, you just want to get drafted, all right? <laughs> all right, it doesn't matter, all right? <laughs> so <laughs> so I'm, I'm sitting there, and I'm saying to myself, okay, I might be a cowboy. And uh, then San Francisco made a trade. And uh, they were able to come down to that 16th spot, and I was selected uh, by the 49ers. Yeah. Yeah. Well, what'd you think when you heard the 49ers had traded up to get you? I mean, these were the world champion 49ers. Right. I was, I was, I was excited because you know of the players. It's one thing for the coach to want to pick a Division One AA guy. It's a whole other thing for an owner. But you had one of the greatest owners ever. And as a little surprise, we have him right here now. 49er owner, Eddie DeBarlo. By satellite. Live. No way. Former <laughs> owner of the 49ers, led the Niners to five Super Bowl titles. Eddie, I haven't seen you forever. How are you? Hi, Rick. Rick, it's great to talk to you. It's been a long time, and you look wonderful. And you, Mr. Rice, my dear, dear friend, congratulations. I remember talking to Bill, and we had to jump up ahead of uh, New England to draft you. And then, uh, you know, as always, nobody wanted to pay you but me, but said, that, you know, what's new? <laughs> you know what? Everybody knew what Jerry was and uh, what he was going to be. There will never, ever be a receiver and a man and a father uh, and, and, and a family man that ever can come near or touch what Jerry Rice has done in his career. Thank you. Can I say something to this guy? Thank you. Thank you, guys. And guys, also, also, you got Bill Walsh in the Hall of Fame. You got Ronnie Lott, you got uh, Joe Montana. All of those guys are in the Hall of Fame. I think Eddie DeBarlo needs to be in the Hall of Fame. <laughs> well, it would be an honor to be with you. But I'll tell you one thing. There is no question, my friend, that come this January, you are a first ballot Hall of Famer, and nobody that I've been around uh, deserves it more. Eddie, thanks so much for joining us. Thank you, Eddie. Thank, Thank you. you. Thanks, Eddie.